going on, everybody? It is your boy Bad Dog here with a New York Giants video. I'm going to find my Giants hat, one with the Yankee hat instead. Uh, obviously, the New York Giants do to nothing in free agency today. And um, probably you're going to, well, no, they will not do anything major uh, in free agency this year. And while that could be frustrating, and it, it, listen, I'm going to say this right now. I mean, Giants fans can't expect much in the way of free agency. Uh, they went out, they got Robert Foster, they re-signed C.J. Board, and the Giants are going to have to be bargain basement shoppers uh, during the free agency period this year. We have no cap space. Uh, unfortunately, that's something that Dave Gittleman did. I was hanging out at Philly 500 stream earlier today, and Philly 500 is a great guy, uh, you know. And, and the Eagles, you know, I was in there, they they signed Hassan Reddick to a three-year, $45 million deal, and I feel like it's a great signing for them. Um, you know, so it's going to be frustrating as Giants fans to watch every team in the NFC East make the moves. Obviously, Washington traded for Carson Wentz, and, you know, we're stuck. We're relegated to pretty much the team we have. Now the Giants can go out, maybe get Darrell Williams, maybe go out there, get Bradley Bozeman. I mean, some guys that shore up the offensive line, which we certainly need. But that's why this draft is so important for the New York Giants. I remember last year, guys, we took our swing at this. Last year was an exciting free agency period for us. when We went out and spent all that money on Kenny Galladay. Obviously, you know, myself, at least I can speak for myself, I thought the Giants needed to make that sign. It didn't work out, or at least it hasn't. It certainly didn't work out last year. I thought Dory Jackson did a pretty good job. People say, hey, you overpaid him, but you got to overpay everybody in free agency because teams are bidding against one another, and that's just the way it goes. But hopefully this year, uh, Joe Shane and company can figure out exactly how to use Galladay. Hopefully he stays healthy. healthy. Hopefully, you know, Dory Jackson stays healthy, and these guys can produce up to the contract that Dave Gettleman gave them. Obviously, everything Dave Gettleman did was completely wrong, which is why we're in the situation that we're in. So that's why this draft is so important. Obviously, the Giants have five picks in the top 85. I think they have 12 overall picks this year. And there's a possibility that they just take the number five pick and take the guy that they want, whether that be Aquanu or whether that be Thibodeau or whoever. And maybe they are able to trade back the number seven pick and get more draft capital. Obviously, we'll see as things go on. There's a lot of talk about Saquon Barkley not being a New York Giant and that he most likely will not be back. Now, a week ago, they said he'll probably be back. And then recently, they're saying he probably he won't be back and take it with a grain of salt. I mean, we really don't know what's going to go on here. But what we got to hope for is Giants fans again, and what's just going to be a very bland free agency period here um, is that within the next couple of years, we can be formidable, we can build through the draft, and then we can go out and make these free agent splashes. Listen, I'm going to give Howie Roseman credit here. You know, I'm certainly a guy that can't stand the Eagles. I'll certainly make fun of him. I'll continue to make fun of Jalen Hurts and all this other stuff because I think he stinks. I think the wide receiving core stinks. But listen, let's give Howie Roseman some credit. Howie Roseman, you know, Eagle fans are like, oh, I hate Howie, I hate Howie. I really don't understand why. Howie Roseman won you a Super Bowl. It's the first, only time you ever won a Super Bowl in your career or your history. Howie Roseman was in charge. He does backload and restructure a lot of contracts, but it seemed to work out okay. He had a very bad year uh, the year before, and what did he do? He went out, he drafted Jalen Hurts, which I still don't think was a great move, but if Jalen Hurts is a stopgap quarterback and you're able to dump Carson Wentz's money off the books and get draft picks, that's a great move. Carson Wentz was with Indianapolis for one year, and they shipped them off to Washington. So the Eagles lost absolutely nothing. They have three first-round draft picks this year, which they can do a lot with those draft picks. They can use all three of them. They can get a guy like maybe Ajabo. I've seen Ajabo fall all the way down to 15. Um they could get a, a wide receiver, which they certainly could use. They could probably get another lineman. Even though Kelsey signed for a one-year deal, it's possible that Tyler Linderbaum is there at 19 and they go that route. Listen, I can't stand the Eagles. I absolutely hate them with every fiber of my being. But being an honest and unbiased guy, at least I try to be. There is definitely sometimes I think with my heart with the New York Giants. I definitely try not to be biased, but maybe I am at times. Uh, maybe I'm a little harsher on other teams, maybe a little bit harsher on Jalen Hurts than I should be. But regardless, I try to be as, as unbiased as I can, and they've done a great job. And then again, Howie Roseman not only was able to get Wentz's contract off the books and get three first-round picks, they were able to go out and get Hassan Reddick, who's just 27 years old. And there was many talks about the Giants going after Hassan Reddick last year. 
Of course, we all know Hassan Reddick. He's a Jersey kid, and he came out, and he had five sacks against the Giants in 2020. Um, so, you know, obviously we know the name. Well, it's a guy that the New York Giants could have used, but we were unable to get him. The Eagles signed him for three years, $45 million. So they make a splash in free agency. They have three first-round draft picks. Did a good job. They did a good job. So what we have to hope for as Giants fans is that Joe Shane can turn it around kind of like Harry Roseman. It's a tall task, right? I mean, we do have a lot of draft capital, which certainly helps, but we are strapped for cash. We have got a very bad team with a lot of holes. We have a lot of holes in that offensive line. We have no pass rush. I don't know what we have for wide receivers. They, you know, they, they took Sterling Shepard back. He's probably not going to play most of the year. He tore his Achilles at the end of the year last year. I don't know how fast he's going to be back. Um, you know, Kenny Galladay was hurt most of last year. Kadarius Toney was hurt most of last year. So who, I don't even know what we have in that wide receiver room. You know, one of the worst contracts that Gettleman signed was the Logan Ryan contract. Uh, that was terrible. Like, we didn't need him, and they gave him $30 million, and he's like a $12 million cap hit. Leonard Williams was a 20. Somebody said, you know, where's the Giants' money? They don't have a roster. Well, it's top-loaded. I mean, Leonard Williams and James Bradbury combined take up almost 25% of our cap, and that's a lot. And They, they are big cap hits this year. You know, Sterling Shepard is a big cap hit, too. So even if you were able to restructure, which they did with Sterling Shepard, it still, it, it still hurts the cap. So... Uh, you know, obviously it's a bad situation to take over and coming from me. I know it's weird because I'm a very impatient guy, but I feel like I've been patient with the giants. And last year, I just felt like they should have improved. I felt like they had a year under Joe judge. It seemed like they got better. They had a draft, you know, to get better. They went out, they spent a hundred million dollars on free agents, including a number one receiver and a number two corner. And you expected the giants to be much better than four and 13. Now, granted, yes, I know Daniel Jones was hurting and we had no chance at winning, but even before that happened, we are not a good team at all. It was badly coached. There was dissension within the ranks, probably dissension in the locker room. We don't know. It just wasn't a good team. It wasn't constructed well. It wasn't coached well. And it showed in the field in embarrassing fashion week after week. But, you know, I mean, for us Giants fans, like I said, this is going to be a little bit frustrating. We're not going to be able to do much. This is going to be a bland period, which is why I'm so forward-looking to this draft. This is something that they cannot miss, and I know I've said this before. I probably say it every year, but I don't know if I can mean it more than I do. This, you're having two top 10 picks and, and three picks in the top 36 and five picks in the top 85. Um we can't miss. This is this is the most important draft, especially since we have a new uh, regime, new coaching staff, new GM. They can't come in here and miss. You know, Dave Gettleman came in here and missed right away. Now, Barkley was good his first year, but then he went out and reached for Daniel Jones. That was terrible. Said he was going to fix the offensive line. Never did that. You know, traded Odell Beckham, got Dexter Lawrence, who was not worth the 17 overall pick, took DeAndre Baker. He's not even with the team anymore. Whiffed on five of the six picks. Daniel Jones will not be a giant beyond this year. Saquon Barkley will not be a giant beyond this year. I'll be shocked if either one of them are a giant beyond this year. Andrew Thomas is like the one guy that he actually seemed like he hit on uh, with his six first-round picks here. Joe Shane's got to do better than that. There's no doubt about it. Not only does he need to hit on five and seven, without a doubt, they have got to be immediate impact players for the Giants if they keep both of those picks. He's got to hit late in the draft. You're not supposed to miss in the top 10. Those guys are supposed to be automatics. Where the GM makes their money in drafting is third through the sixth round. When it's not a lot of money, you try to find those diamonds in the rough. You try to find those productive players that are starters. You get a starter in the fourth, fifth, sixth round. You've done a good job. Like, Tate Crowder's not the best linebacker ever, but God, he was Mr. Irrelevant in the draft. I felt like for the 255th pick, Dave Gettleman actually hit on that one because he's been pretty productive for us. Joe Shane's got to hit on five and seven. There's no doubt about it. And he's got to hit throughout the draft. Again, this free agency period is going to be very bland for us. We're just going to have to fill out some spots with some guys that are cut. And like I said, some bargain basement deals. The draft is where the New York Giants are going to have to make their noise, and we're just going to have to see what happens. So that's all I got in this video. I just wanted to come on, talk a little Giants, tell you what I thought about the free agency and what I expect. And again, I don't expect much of anything because we really can't do anything. So that's all I got in this video. Thank you for watching. If you made it this far, thank you so much. Please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you next time. It's Bad Diggy Dizzle. I'm out. Peace.